Good afternoon. I'm Lydia DiDiello, the CEO and founder of Capital Pricing Consultants, a revenue management consultancy. And I have the pleasure of hosting women and manufacturing today. And my guest is Philomena Malvona. She is the owner and one of the, well, the daughter of the founder of Jerry and Sal's Pizza Restaurant in Hanoverton, PA. And she is also an author, which we're going to talk about. She's had quite an interesting and exciting career. And I wanna share that with our viewers today. So Philomena, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Well, we're glad to have you. And I love your story as we were preparing and, and talking a little bit about what to share with the viewers. Now, I know you had shared with me that you were very young when your dad had an opportunity to move the family to Hanoverton um, to an existing restaurant. But tell us a little bit about your experience and, and maybe start with the name. Where did Jerry and Sal's come from? Uh, Jerry and Sal's, uh, Jerry is my father and uh, Sal was my uncle who was my mom's brother. Okay. So that's where Jerry and Sal come from. And how old is the business, Philomena? It will be 50 years old next year. So, and how old were you when you moved and, and started the whole business? So dad, we were living in Brooklyn. My brother and I were born in Brooklyn and we uh, shortly, I guess I was maybe three or four years old. We moved to Hanover PA, which is right outside of Gettysburg. Um, we moved very quickly. Dad had the opportunity to come to Hanover. So we, it was an over, almost an overnight uh, situation. So we moved to Hanover. Uh, we lived, uh, I think dad moved us in, into a, a little motel for a night or two. And then um, we moved to uh, McSherry's town. We stayed there for about a year in an apartment. And then mom and dad bought a house in Hanover, PA, which mom is still in right now. And uh, we, we've been here ever since. So really a landmark in the community. Yes, definitely a staple. And it's really interesting because I admire what your dad did because I think it's something now that I see so many women executives doing and owners like yourself, which is we make decisions quickly because we have to. The business environment says, hey, there's an opportunity. Yes or no, let's go. And if we say, well, I want to think about it, the opportunity passes by. Correct. So I think it was already a, a great opportunity in the making. Um, it's kind of starting off with, with this opportunity. So go for it quickly. And speaking of opportunities, viewers, I want to share with you that we're doing something a little different today. You know, I know many of you after work, perhaps grab a glass of wine with your friends or a beer and kick back. So since Philomena is a woman restaurateur, I invited her today to pick a favorite vintage that she has and bring a glass of wine with her. So, whoops, sorry guys, I know it's a little hard for you to see and I'll do it this way. Um, so I've got a rosé, Philo, what are you drinking? Uh, Reuniti, actually. All right. I, know. <laughs> I grabbed the first thing I found. Reuniti on ice, there we go. Yes. yes. Well, so, um, so anyway, viewers, this is um, just, trying to be a little more realistic with, with how we all relate to each other and communicate. So cheers, everyone. So Philomena, in terms of owning a restaurant, share with us a little bit about, you know, you said you really grew up in the restaurant industry and that you were very small when you, when you arrived in Hanoverton uh, with your parents taking over the restaurant. How old were you when you started working there? Well, we got to Hanover when I was, again, three, four years old, and uh, my mom and dad put my brother and myself into a little private uh, Catholic school down the street. Um, we didn't speak English very well. We spoke Spanish and, uh, and Italian in the household, um, and there's a, a backstory to that. But so we, my brother and I stayed after school with the nuns and had to learn, uh, you know, how to, to speak properly. We didn't, you know, I wasn't the greatest. So, um, uh, yeah, it was, it was school and we would get picked up by my mom or a family member and it was uh, off to the pizza shop. 
So it was school pizza shop. So I would still be in my uniform. I'd get to the pizza shop and um, my after school snack was uh, anchovies um, on a piece of wax paper. And uh, so I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd have my anchovies and then I would uh, head over to Sears, uh, which was right next to the pizza shop. Uh, I'd sat there, watched cartoons in the TV department um with my anchovies and and then uh if i felt like taking a nap i would go over to the uh, furniture department take a nap on a bed or a couch and <laughs> and make my way back to the pizza shop and it was it was hilarious because the, the whole staff knew knew who we were so we were it was like my it was like my home it was extended family and i gotta tell you i have never ever heard of anyone <laughs> ever say they had anchovies as a snack i'll eat them on i won't eat them on pizza that's just wrong but i'll eat them on a caesar salad but i have to tell you just on yeah. wax paper would be a challenge even now <laughs> yeah no i still do it today just out of the out of the jar and and because I, we talked a bit in background your mom is from spain is she not no my my both my parents are from italy naples okay. italy born okay. there my mother and her family moved to argentina Buenos Aires when when she was a young girl and so okay. she grew up in Argentina uh later on they all moved to 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 Brooklyn New York where where she met my father so that's where the the Spanish and the Italian comes from and in in when we would get together with our family it was um one sentence would be would would be Spanish Italian and and, and maybe throw in a little English word too while we're at it and it was and it was everybody understood it was great but i would imagine being trilingual that has to help you a great deal now as a restaurant owner in terms of your staff and hiring all different cultures it, it sure does uh the spanish really comes in handy we have so many people that come in customers that don't speak any english and uh they'll they'll yell for me you know i need a spanish speaking person so i'll go over and and then it creates a comfort and uh those customers know you know they can come to us and there's someone there that's going to understand them and be able to to take their order well and i think you you make a really good point for them and it because you know i originally my mindset was i was thinking about the, the people that you employ that would be speaking spanish perhaps um because such a huge popular part of the population is Latin and therefore Spanish speaking. But your answer in terms of customers is something I hadn't thought of. So I think that brings a great point out in terms of, you know, how many entrepreneurs do we have and business owners that are tuning into this broadcast? And we, we've always got to think both directions, right? It's not just the back of the house and how we keep things running. Correct. But what about that, the front of the house and the customer? who may not really understand English very well and, and what options do we have for them, right? Right, you're so, right, you know, and it's it's really nice because we, they'll have, uh, I mean, they'll be talking to us the whole time they're, they're eating and 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 this, there's, they're so comfortable and they're so gracious because, you know, it's not something that they can find very easily. So to have a place where they can go and relax and have dinner with their entire family and, and be understood and, and they're relaxed and, and oh, I, I, I enjoy it. I, we, it just happened last night. There was a table of 12 that came in and she came to the counter and thank mm -hmm. my brother and I were both there. So that was, that was great. So you, your brother is your partner in the business. Is that Correct. right? Correct. Yes. So that's good. You have a, a, a built-in backup system with each other. Absolutely. Which, yeah. When one's on vacation, one is in the house and, and the other way around. So that's a great comfort to have because um, no one loves your business like you do. And, and I think that's also a great point, which is the details. And you and I talked a little bit about you are able to do everything from make the pizza dough to mop the floor, make the, it, it doesn't order the supplies, no matter what it is, you literally have to do everything. Yes. Yes, you really don't have a choice. You have to, uh, me, I, I train people, so I have to be able to let them know how to wash the dishes properly, how to change out the garbage bag and go wash your hands. And uh, from start to finish, I have to know how to do everything so I can train correctly. And 
I would think that also builds a lot of credibility with your staff because they see it's not just the boss lady who walks in and goes, you do this and you do that and you do this, right. but you're covered in flour, you're sweeping the floor, you're doing whatever it takes, right? I'm sure when you had your party of 12 come in last night, everybody works together to get them served and, and get that meal then cleaned up, et cetera. You can't just stand by and go, oh, well that's, you know, I'll just watch. Yeah, no, absolutely. I. I, uh, I take pride in that I'm not afraid to, to get in the dirt and, and, and do the, the, the dirty work, if you will. Um, I enjoy it. I, I love what I do. I love what I do. It's not work for me. It's, it's, I leave home and I go to my, my other home and I'm there all day. And I, I just, I love what I do. I love what I do. And so passion for what you do matters a great deal because when you said you leave home and go to home, essentially, I'm Correct. paraphrasing, but, but I think that is so important for anyone that owns a business that wants to continue to own it, because without that passion, you put in really long hours. And when you're doing everything all the time, because you don't ever know who's going to call off or what's not going to work out, or especially I'm sure now with supply chain issues, you're constantly dealing with that as well. Hey, I ordered this many cases of tomatoes and I got this. Now what am I supposed to do? Right, right. You scramble, you run to the store and hope they have some. Yeah. <laughs> Something that you can make work, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, but I, I think that that um, resiliency and ability to make decisions quickly and um, learn different ways to work together. Tell me for you as a woman, that had to be not particularly easy assuming a role as an owner, especially when it sounds like your father basically, I mean, your mom and dad ran it together from what I understand. Yes. But it, that's a fairly male dominated industry, is it not? It is. I, I read yesterday, I was doing some research that the, uh, uh, I think it was the National Restaurant Association did say in a study this made this year that uh, 50% of uh restaurant owners are now women so we're doing okay. something right yeah <laughs> so, that's fantastic yeah, it is. yeah so yes back to that my, my dad yes my dad was the man so you know he he did everything mom was there to help him um and then i came in later um my, my brother uh was there and then he went off to open his own restaurant uh, but he's back with me now but yeah our, working with family people say to to us so it, you're so lucky you get to work with family and um i would just look at them and and I, i'd have this look like you know you have no idea like it's not that easy it's not that easy my my parents had uh my father had a, a different way of of thinking and working it was very old school very militant uh there was no such thing as taking a break or, or you know eating I, I don't know it was it was you know work you worked so i had to i came in and i had I had other ideas and you had to, you had to change with the times and people, the new people that were coming in, um, didn't agree with the way my dad did things. So I was like this middle guy trying to get my dad to understand them and trying to get them to understand my dad. And so I was trying to work both, both sides and, and make it come together smoothly. And that was not always easy. I mean, <laughs> When people say, oh, you're so lucky, I my head spins because I can remember screaming at the end of the night at my mom and dad, we have to do credit cards. Like things, you know, times are changing. We have to accept credit cards, dad. And and he'd be like, no, you know, we're not doing it. And, and you know, and so I it was it's hard. It's hard. And then you want to change a couple things, maybe the menu or or change how you go about things or bring in computers and Oh my goodness. It, it, it's, it, it was a battle. It was a battle. A lot of days it was a battle until finally dad was like, do what you got to do. You know? And I was like, fine. So my brother and I brought in the credit cards, brought in the computers and, and, and changed things. But once we did that, my mom was like, I'm out because she was intimidated by the, the credit card machines and the computers. Cause she was, she had that woman. Wow. When we had registers, 
she had every price memorized of every item. So it was literally, I want, you know, this, 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 she'd be like, you know, just punching in the numbers and she had it down. But now with the computer, which was easier because the computer remembered everything, you just had to punch it in. Um, it was, she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it. And also my father and his generation, when people would order pizza, we would literally yell it over to them. Mm -hmm. Hey, large pepperoni, half anchovies, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be like 10 pizzas at a time coming on a Friday night. I mean, whatever. It was all up here. There was no such thing as even writing it down. They just, they just did it. They knew. And then the computers came and, you know, we would print, print things out. And, and uh, dad was like, what, you know, what is this? <laughs> and so and, and it was, it was, it was tough. It was sometimes we're just really, really tough to get them to make that change. And, and so that's when dad kind of backed off and, and let me, let me kind of come in and take over a little bit. Um, mom was at this point out, she was just basically getting drinks, <laughs> so, <laughs> but we were all there. Yes. It was beautiful because we were always together. And I love that. I love that to this day because now it's me and my brother and my mom will come in. Dad passed away five years ago. So, uh, but, but it's, it's still there. We're, we're always together and I am older now. So uh, I appreciate, I appreciate that very much because I look around and I see that, you know, people don't, aren't always with their families. So we are very, very fortunate to have that. And I am grateful for that. And my brother and I, when we came together again, again, that was a lot of, you know, bickering and, 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 you know, a lot of bumping heads because he was th this guy and I'm his little sister. And there was a lot of that going on with, with me, you know, um, I, I didn't like that. I didn't do well with you. You, you're the little your little sister, you be quiet. I got this. And so that just did not go well with me. So, so we fought, yes, but we, we decided, listen, you know, we can't fight. We can't fight. So if there's an issue, we come together, we hash it out. And, and at the end it's, I love you. I love you too. And let's, let's do this together. We have to do this together. So it's, it's not always hard to work with family. Um, but at the end, your family and, you have to remember that. So you got to do whatever it takes to, 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 to get along and make it work. And my dad worked, holy cow, 14, 15, 16 hours a day, seven days a week um, to get where we are, to give us what we have today. So that is always, that is always in front of me reminding me, you know, this is, this is dad's house and I have to take care of it. We have to take care of it together. So that is huge. That's huge in my heart. But it sounds like that that's a, that's a mutual respect that you and your brother have relative to understanding because be, since you both grew up there, literally yes. you saw what it took. You saw those hours because you lived them. Yes. You might not have been working at right. obviously seven or eight, 10 years old, right. but, but you still saw it and, and you knew the investment that it took for your parents to do that every single day to build what is a staple in the community. And so, you know, I think Philomena, you have a really unique perspective and, and came through an amazingly unique challenge because first of all, working with family, I believe is always a challenge mm -hmm. because you live with them and then to work with them is a whole different dynamic. And then secondly, being that you're a woman mm -hmm. and, and younger, which makes it twice as difficult, right? So I could certainly feel for you in terms of the conversation. You, you know, I'm kind of chuckling, thinking about you saying, you know, look dad, credit cards, it's so time. Yeah. Right. And, and just trying to, to change the mentality of someone who's, who can remember 10 pizzas with, with all the different toppings in his head. And now you want to put them on slips, but why, why right. does the computer do it? I already know how to do it. What's the problem. Right. 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 And, and so I, that had to be very difficult because Arguing your position as a woman and being respectful is one thing, but when it's your father or your older brother, mm -hmm. that's a whole nother level of finesse that's required. That's, that is um, quite a dynamic. So I give you a ton of credit for getting through that. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure about the finesse part, but it, it was, uh, it, it was hard. It was hard to be heard. 
because their their ideas were better they were bigger and i i would just sit there and i would just have to just bite my tongue because i you know i didn't want to fight i didn't want to fight but you know years have passed and i've learned to you know to speak you know i i i have to sit down with my brother my mom my dad whatever at the time and, and just be like listen we have we need to do this you know times are changing people coming in and working for us are, are, are coming from a different generation, different backgrounds, different cultures. So we have to adjust. We have to adjust. And I had to adjust with, speaking of culture, uh, we had different cultures come through our restaurant and everybody does when you're in the restaurant business, it's just the way it is. Um, there are cultures that don't do well when a woman is telling them what to do or how to do it. So in the beginning, um, I uh, did not have that finesse. So it was, I just told you to do something, why aren't you doing it? And then they would be out the back door and it, they, they, they just weren't having, they were not having it. They were not gonna have a woman tell them what to do. And I, after a few left, I was like, okay, what's going on here? So I kind of had to change my approach um use my languages that i know and 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 kind of build a, a relationship first with them side by side and and then uh, i gained that respect and i and i gained uh their their confidence and then you know it was completely different so now it's um it's easy it's easy when i have somebody from a different culture come in and i i i i don't even sometimes i don't even say too much they watch me they just watch me and they, okay. and then when that convert, when we start having conversations, they're like, wow, they call me superwoman in, in the pizza shop. Um, cause they're like, wow, you do everything and you're not scared of anything. And I, you know, and it makes me smile because that took a lot for them to say. And I, I love it. I love that they, we know we have that relationship now where I can, now we goof off. We, we, you know, we joke and we have, we have that great, great um, communication together and we work well together. And there's not this, you know, head banging where I'm, I'm, I am man and you are woman or I am woman. And you, right. You're my employee. So it's not like that. We're equal. And, and I, I want to keep it that way. I like it. It works well. But that's something that, that as a skill, you've clearly built up, Philomena, in terms of providing the example, just Correct. doing all of the jobs, anything that needs done, you're doing it as you're speaking, as you're talking with them. And then I think something you shared with me was asking for help rather than telling them to do something Correct. in terms of buying, getting buy-in from men of cultures that typically are not matriarchal at all and are not comfortable with a woman telling them what to do. Correct. But if you ask for help, no problem. They'll take care of it for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, yeah, absolutely. And when, when they're over there, you know, and they're busy and they're making pizza and they've got, we have a, a, a pie called the Sicilian. So, you know, that takes, it, it takes you away from making that pizza to come over here and make this pizza. So, you know, when I would go grab the, when I'd hear someone say the Sicilian, I'd go grab it, slap it down next to them. And I'd go at it. They, they would be like, Oh, you can do that too. And I'd be like, yeah, I can do this. I gotcha. You know? So, so I would throw that Sicilian and in, in, in the oven and they, they would be so at the end of the night, they were so grateful to have me next to them because I was, you know, spinning the pies in the oven, taking them out, boxing, cutting, bagging, whatever, whatever. And all they had to concentrate on was making it and getting it in the oven. The rest I take care of. And at the end of the night, they are just so grateful for me to be by their side. And then that's how I, that's how I've learned to build my relationship with them. And, 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 you know, for them to look at me and see me as a coworker and not this woman boss image uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to come across that way. I, I don't want to walk around and, you know, just, you know, smack the whip. It's not me. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm right there with you. So, and, but you're building, you're really building a family environment essentially within your business. And I think that's a great takeaway for our viewers in terms of it, it's about building colleague type relationships right. because at the end of the day, everybody in that shop knows who signs their paycheck. And there's no question about that, but an, an attitude of 
of help and and you don't wait for them to ask you because then that's hard on their egos right but rather before before they even ask you into it hey, they need help let me just get in there and do right. this and so i think that that builds tremendous rapport um and avoids all of the, the spots of tension that there could be correct now let's move on from your career as a restaurateur into becoming an author. And I know this was something from what you shared with me that this was really important to you. Um, tell us about the book that you wrote. And if you have a copy, hold it up for me, please. I do, it's right here. All right, and so what would you do if? Correct. So what made you decide to write this book? Give us a little bit of background and tell us about it. This book has a crazy story behind it because it, you know, I never wanted to get involved in, in the family business. That was not the plan. Um, I don't know what the plan was, but it wasn't that. It was anything but that. But um, one day my mom called and said, hey, the girl that does all our booking and blah, 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 this stuff, she's taking a two-week vacation. We need your help. Can you can you fill in while she's gone? Said, sure, no problem. I can, I can handle this for two weeks. No big deal. <laughs> two weeks turned out to be 25 years. So um that's how that happened i it, it, it and you know when you're destined to do something you just are when god has a plan it's there's nothing you can do about it so i uh started working there and i've been there 25 years or so and this new generation that was coming into work the younger generation was coming into work um i started noticing this um struggle with problem solving uh, and I, it was getting worse by the day and I, and they would be blowing up my phone with text. If I wasn't there, Hey, um, how do you change out toilet paper or where is the toilet paper or where are the napkins? Or there was a spill. Where, what do I do? All these, these real common sense things were happening and I, I, it was getting worse and worse. And I was like, all right, what, what's going on? I, I don't understand this. Um, and I, one morning I, I woke up um, straight up in my bed and this title, this title just popped in my head and I don't know where it came from. It just did. And I, and I laid in bed and I thought, oh, well, that, that, that would be a cool book. That would be a cool book, but I don't, I'm not a writer. So, you know, no. So I let it go and I would, it would continue. It took me six years legit six years to get this book where it is today because i constantly talked myself out of it i'm not a writer i where do you even begin writing a book um so about a year ago i my girlfriends that that i meet with every week uh for dinner you know we always talk about things and ideas and we 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 cheer each other on and 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 get it going so they were i you know threw this at them and and they were like are you nuts we yeah like this is a great idea you need to do this and i kind of showed them rough copies and they're like what are you doing you're crazy like get this out get this out so i was like okay and i joined a writers group in gettysburg which i was started going to and started learning more about how to begin and uh you know i went on amazon and did some research and and started getting really serious about it. So about a year ago, I started getting serious and I started doing my proof and, and writing and I um, got a lot of help. And I think, you know, you, you brought up some really key points for our listeners in terms of you surround yourself with a group of supporters that you do on a consistent basis. And that's so critical because as women, very often we make sure everybody else is supported and we forget about ourselves. And so I applaud the fact that you keep that as a priority. And I hope okay. our viewers are really listening to that because we need that for ourselves Yes. and, and a network to go to that's safe, that'll call us out. And it sounds like your friends did, hey, what are you oh. doing, Delaneda? You got this idea, how long are you gonna sit on this? Right. Make something happen with it. Right. And then. A step beyond that is then you took action on that relative to joining a professional writing group mm -hmm. to help you hone that skill. So that I think often as women, the other thing we do is we don't take that next step. And we and then we say, oh, it never worked out or I wasn't able to do it, but we didn't push ourselves and you right. did. Right. And, and so I think that that's really 
noteworthy in terms of, of those next steps to take. And now this book is available on Amazon, oh, on Book Baby, uh, Target, Barnes and Noble, uh, Great Reads and a few other more places I can't even think. So it released on Mother's Day, so it's out there. And I, uh, again, I, I, I was looking at my, my teens that were working for me and I thought, what, what happened? Why is this happening? Why are we not able to problem solve? So I thought, well, maybe it starts when we're little, you know? So I began watching um, our customers and even myself, I'm a mother of two, you know, and I, 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 you know, I do it. I still do it where we're not taking the time to show our children how to do simple tasks, like clean up a mess. If, a, if, a, if we spill our drink, because it's quicker, if we do it here, I got it here. I got it here. I got it here. I'll do it. We got to go. We got to keep moving. So let me, let me do it. Cause it's quicker if I do it and we can move along. Well, years of that makes a person that doesn't know how to, to do anything. Mm -hmm. So I went back to, you know, what would you do if, and there's like, there's situations in here for little kids. What would you do if somebody made fun of your body or if someone didn't want to sit with you at recess or play with you or eat lunch with you or um, all these different issues are in here? Well, what would you do? How would, how would you approach that problem? And we need to get our kids talking uh, in a group uh, in a group session at school maybe circle time let them start talking it, it, the right the answers may not be right or, or whatever but let them start talking and let us guide well how about if we did this well, what, what if we tried this or maybe the next time that happens you can do this and see what happens and and you know give them ideas because they're they're little they're young they don't know what to do and I think our natural reaction is is to defend ourselves. So if somebody hits me, I'm going to hit them back. Well, let's not do that. Let's talk. Let's say, hey, why did you do that? What, you know, maybe they didn't understand you correctly, whatever. Let's, let's just start giving them better ideas so that as we grow up, we keep practicing that rather than jumping to conclusions and, 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 and quickly trying to defend ourselves by attacking back. Let's chill and assess the situation and, and, and then go about it. And, and I think so many relationships could be saved. New ones could be started if we just took the time to, to maybe not attack so quickly. And it, it has to start at an early age, just it becomes second nature to us. Like, you know, I don't know, breathing. And I cannot think of a better note, Philomena, to end the broadcast on it's time than that one. One of reaching across and one of, of non-confrontation, but of sharing and of um, taking the time to communicate. So cheers to you. So thank you so much, Philomena, for being my guest today on Women in Manufacturing. And viewers, as always, you know that Women in Manufacturing is only one of the many broadcasts that we offer you. You can always visit jacketmediaco.com to find out other opportunities and things you could listen to, such as Manufacturing Talk Radio, Manufacturing Matters, Hazard Girls, and that highlights women in, uh, in uh, I'm sorry, women that are working in positions that could be considered dangerous in their careers. So please join us again for our next installment of Women and Manufacturing. And with that, cheers, ladies. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.